Greetings, it's your boy, Mr. House of Jails. I have no idea where that came from, but um, anyway, <laughs> kind of like it now. But anyway, so I am here to do something that I've never done before, and that is teach music theory on YouTube. Mm. So I was doing the Jodeci tutorial uh, for My Heart Belongs to You. And I caught myself talking about music theory. And so I was like, in that video, I, I, it was like halfway, I'm teaching the song, you know, whatever you want, whatever you need, my heart belongs to you. Anyway, so I was in the middle of that, right? <laughs> and then I was like, then I go teaching um, theory again. And then I just simply asked a very simple question. If there's anyone that would like to just see some stuff, music theory stuff and just things that would just help you, you know, figure out the piano. I'm not the greatest piano. Trust me, there's, I can't do all the fancy runs and all that stuff that, you know, but I can, you know, do the basic stuff and stop really been working on playing by ear these last couple of years because I read music too. I was trained how to read music and all that stuff. But anyway. I had a couple of people that said yes, they would like to see just some basic techniques. So this is the first of a series of music theory uh, classes. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not going to be a class class like that. But just some things that will help you out. This video right here is for the person that knows nothing about these black and white keys. So I'm telling you right now. Even if you're one of the people that one of my YouTube subscribers is like, Yo, I like House of Jazz. He's cool. I'm going to tell you right now, if you know anything about these notes, anything about half steps and whole steps, cut this video off, go to the next one, okay? If it's not up yet, I'm I'm planning on, this is it's going to be a short video, so I'm pretty sure the next video will be up minutes after this one is done. This is just for the person that knows nothing. They're like, what are these little white things? What are these black things? You know, this is for that person, okay? So that's that's the disclaimer right here. And let me also just say at the beginning of the video, if you have been blessed by uh, any of my piano tutorials or if you're looking at this and looking at these series of music theory classes and you would just simply like to just say thank you in a monetary fashion, just a simple donation, feel free to send um, send that donation to my PayPal account. Uh, you can send it via my email address. If you go to paypal.com and type in my email address, you can send any type of donation you would like. My email is houseofjazz at yahoo.com. Jazz is with one Z. H-O-U-S-E-O-F-J-A-Z. Just one Z at yahoo.com. If you want to, cool. If you don't want to, hey, I'm still doing the lessons anyway because... People help me out, and I like helping other people out. So that's just how that is. Now, here we go. First thing I'm going to teach you is the name of these keys, white ones, and the name of these black ones. And no, I'm not racist. It's just how the piano was made, black and white, right? <laughs> Ebony and Ivory, side by side on my piano. Anyway, okay, so <laughs> uh, lesson one, how to find C. Or, you know what? Let me back up just a little bit more. No, this is going to be lesson one, the musical alphabet. The first thing you need to know is that in the musical alphabet, there you only have letters A through G from your alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's no such thing as a note that's called H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. That does not exist. In the musical alphabet, you only go from A to G, and then you start over at A again. Okay, so that's lesson number one. Musical alphabet is from what two letters? Very good, class. I heard everybody say it. Let me give you... Okay, no, I, I seriously know. Okay, now, the first note that always seems to just be the center of when people learn the piano... Oh, sorry about that, y'all. Is... um where C is, where C is on the piano. So I'm going to show you where C is. Here's this simple trick that will always work. 
If you look at your piano, look at the black keys. Now, I'm going to tell you, look at the black keys. If you notice, they're grouped in three, two. Three, two, three, two. And it does that for all 88 keys of the, on, on the standard piano, okay? Every time you see the group of keys that are grouped in two, all you have to do is go to the first one that's on the left, slide to the left to that first white key and that will always be C I don't care where you are on the piano you find two black keys go to that first one slide to the left there you go that's C same thing right here slide to the left okay and if you notice it's the same note if you have a good ear you can tell the pitch is exactly the same but just an octave higher once you can find C, you can find any other letter on the piano. Let me explain. The out the, the uh, piano, the notes on the piano are organized just like the alphabet in the order. So if this is C, you move to your right. This is going to be D. This is going to be E. This is going to be F. And then this is going to be G. Now, if you remember, I told you the musical alphabet is from A to G. After G, you go back to A. So if this is G, you're going to have to start over again and say A, B, C. Now, if you notice where I'm saying is C again, it is the two black keys there. See how that work? Okay. So once you can find C, if someone say, hey, can you play an A on the piano for me? You know, eventually I would want you to be able to say, yeah, here's A. But until you learn it, at least you can go and say, well, if this is C, C, D, E, F, G, A. Oh, yeah, here's A. You know, you might be with a band and a bass player trying to tune the strings. And he might say, give me an E. Okay, so you can, at least you can say, well, if this is C, C, D, E. Oh, here's E, sir. Here's E. Give me a B. Then you can go to C, right? And if you know how to say your alphabet backwards, what comes before C? B, right? <laughs> so you can quickly find B if you just know go backwards. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. So whichever way you can do it, whether it's forward, sorry, <laughs> or backwards, I was trying to be slick. There you go, back. I'm trying to be slick. Don't worry about that. But anyway, so that's very important. The other now. That takes care of the white keys. Now I'm going to teach you how to know what these black keys are called. These black keys have both sharp and flat names. Let me explain. I like to just use G to um, explain this. So this, this is G on the piano, okay? If you're not sure where G is, find the two black notes. There go your C. C, D, E, F, G. Okay. With G... First, let me explain half steps and whole steps, okay? A half step is when you're on a note on the piano. Listen, you you on any note, you can, I don't care what note. You can just randomly pick a note. I'm just going to stick on G right now just because I'm just, that's just a note I'm choosing to use. Whenever you move to the very next note on the piano, whether it's to the left or to the right, when you move to the very next note, that is known as a half step. Now, here's where some people get it wrong when they're first getting on the piano. If I tell them, find G, they can find, they understand the C thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, this is C, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah, this is G. And I say, okay, now move to the very next note of the piano. You know what they generally would do? They play that note. So, yeah, this is the next note. I don't think so. <laughs> if this is G, wouldn't this note be the very next note? Right? And then that note. See what I'm saying? See what I'm doing? You go from here to here. This is the next note. And if you were moving to the left or going down the piano, you would go back to this note, right? See? Very next note. Every time you move like that to the very next note, it's always called the half step. It's not always going to be a white key to a black key or a black key to a white key. There are two instances on the piano where that's just not the case. Here is a C right here. 
If you notice, you got C and then you have B. But there is no black key in between those, those keys. However, when you go from C and you go back a half step, I mean, go back to the very next note, that is still a half step. But what, 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 what you going from a white key to a white key? Yeah, okay, that's nice and everything. But the bottom line is that this is still a half step. Okay? Whether I go from B to C or C to B, it's still a half step. The only other time that happens is between E and F. Two black keys here, C, C, D, E. You go from E, then you go to F. No black key in between, but if I start on E and I play F, it's still a half step. If I start on F and I go back to E, it's still a um, half step. Half step regardless if you're going to the left or to the right. Okay. Now, talking about what these black keys are called, let's go back to G. Whenever I do a half step, now that we know what it's called, a half step to the left or going down or going back, as it's sometimes referred to by musicians, if I go on G and I go back a half step, what I just did was take this letter G and made it flat. So if this is G and I go to the left, this becomes known as G flat. Let me explain that again. This is G, right? Because here's the two black keys. Here's C, C, D, E, F, G. Here's G. Now I'm going to take this G and I'm going to go back just a half step. So now this black note is known as G flat. G, G flat. Go back to G again. But what if I want to go a half step to the right, though, Mr. House of Jazz? Very simple. You go to the right, the half step to the right. This is... This is called sharp. Okay, now you then took the G and you made it sharp. So this note is known as G sharp. You get it? Here's G, G sharp. Here's G, G flat. Works throughout the entire keyboard. Even with the ones that have two white keys side by side. If this is C and I go back a half step, which will land me on this key right here, this note, what I did was just take C and made it flat. So now this is C flat. Wait a minute, uh, Mr. House of Jazz. I thought this was B. Remember, you said C, D, E, F, G, then go back to A, B, C, B. This is B. How come you calling this C flat also? It's very simple. It's a very <laughs> simple term in music called enharmonic. Enharmonic simply means you have a, one note that has the two different names to it. So those two names are called enharmonic. So this is B. This is also C flat. That means C flat and B are enharmonic. That's all it means. It's just a fancy word to just say, oh, this is the same note. Same thing right here. Here's G. You go up a half step and we said this is G sharp. Okay, yeah, this note is called G sharp. But what if you start on the A and you go back a half step? Well, didn't you say when you go back to the left, it's a half step? Um, It's called flat, sorry. Yes, yes, it's a half step, but it's called flat. So shouldn't this be called A flat? A flat? Well, yes, this is called A flat. Then why do you say, well, I thought this was called G sharp. Very simple. A flat and G sharp. It's the exact same note on the piano. Therefore, G sharp and A flat are in harmonic. You got it. Take the time, rewind the video, get if I lost you. But it, it, it's really that simple. Sometimes people will, are, are so determined that something is so hard that when you t show them something that is ridiculously simple, they're like, it can't be that simple. But it is. Before I cut this video off, I just want to show you what whole steps are. Because my next video is going to show you how to figure out any major scale. Pick a, close your eyes, pick a key on the piano, open your eyes, and then be able to figure out what the major scale is. But in order for you to know the major scale, you have to know what whole steps and half steps are. I showed you the half step, and let me show you the whole step. Whole step, using G as the example again, just because it's just there. Okay. When you skip the very next note and go to the next note, that's called a whole step. So that means G 
to A. That's a whole step. G to G sharp, half step, right? When you move to the very next note. But if you skip that note and go to the very next note after that one, whole step. Basically, it's two half steps, basically, right? Because this to this is a half step, and this to this is a half step. Two half steps. Two half steps equals one whole step. So F to G. This is a whole step. Why? Because this is F, half step, whole step. So half step, whole step, half step, whole step. Works with the white keys too when they're side by side. E to F, that's a half step. E, one, two. To F sharp is a whole step. It's a whole step. Same thing with this one. You go to C, you go back one note, this is C flat, it's a half step. But if I go back two notes, that's a whole step. C to B flat, okay? So there you go. That's your first lesson. Um, if you looked at this lesson, you're like, man, I know all this stuff already. I apologize, but I warned you at the beginning. I said, if you know anything about the letters and half steps and whole steps, don't look at this because this is for the super duper beginner. The next video that I'm about to record right now, getting ready to do, I'm going to hit stop on this and I'm going to record the next one is how to play a major scale. No matter what letter it is, whatever, A major scale, B major scale, C, D, F sharp major, A flat major, B flat, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to, it's a trick, it's a little formula. Until you just have them memorized. Eventually, you want to just have them memorized and just be able to just do it on the spot. But while you're learning, there's a formula using whole steps and half steps that works every time with you figuring out a major scale. Okay, so stay tuned for that video. Hope this was a help for anyone who just really knew nothing about the piano. All right, see you next time.